Mike Evans here, playing joined by Joachim Numansa Buckley, who's coming off one of the best years of his career in 2023 with two wins, one knockout. Yeah. Joachim, great to sit down and chat. How are things for you today? Yeah, man, I'm um, feeling good, bro. Um, trying to get one more fight in, you know, try to get a, a three-fight winning streak going. So, you know, maybe maybe we get a last-minute call, you know, in December. I did see your you tweeted the Vince McMahon meme. Of like the yeah. the, the, the tears uh, about not getting a yeah. fight in December. Yeah. Was it your plan to fight in December? Yeah, I, I still yeah I, I still plan to fight, but it's just like is it is it going to happen though? Mm. You know, I got a lot of people always coming up to me like, hey, bro, when, when you getting back out there, you know, love to see you in December and stuff like that. But I really don't have an answer to like giving them a yes. You know, it's just like a wait and see. But you know, I thought it'd just be funny to post that to be honest with you. <laughs> And look, you obviously have um, you have Kelvin Gastelum, Sean Brady next Saturday in Austin. You obviously have three massive welterweight fights at 296, obviously with the title fight, Leon Edwards and then Ian Gary, Luke Hay, and then obviously Wonderboy and Rachmanov. Could you make a short notice fight at 170 or would it be 185? Um, I mean, for December 16th, I definitely could do that. Easy work. Um, we looking we looking at that uh, Vicente Luque and Ian Gary, not Ian Gary, I'm sorry, uh, I think it's Shavkat and uh, Wonderboy, mm. right? And um, you know, I mean, no disrespect to Wonderboy, he's always been a tough guy and always willing to take a fight. But for some reason, it's telling me he ain't gonna show up to that. One. Some tell me that Wonderboy ain't gonna show up to that one. So let's get ready. You know, you sound you got a little bit of intel inside. Have you got a, a mole in Wonderboy's camp or something? Nah, like that? nah, just nah. It's just fight, fighters, no fighters, man. And to be honest with you, Wonderboy for the longest time didn't want to fight Shavkat. And, you know, I, I'm guessing, like, the UFC gave him a good little bag in order to get up in there. But regardless, so it's this sport is all mental, you know. So, for some reason, I'm just, you know, throwing up a little lob. I don't think Wonderboy going to be able to make it to that cage for whatever our reason. So, let's Let, get ready. Let's go through the, the welterweight fight at 296. So, let's go with Luke Hay and Ian Gary first. How do you see that one playing out? Uh, Vicente Luque, man, back, back then, I, I would say, like, uh, before the Jeff Neal fight, right? Vicente Luque has always been, I feel like, a big threat in the division, in the welterweight division. It's somebody that I thought was going to do big things, at least fight for a title one day. Uh, but after that Jeff Neal loss, man, and really getting dominated the way he did, you know, and I know that he had that fight with RDA, which is whatever, you know, fight went to a decision. I don't really even remember remember much of the fight. But regardless, though, I just don't feel like Vicente Luque is that same type of fighter anymore. And I can uh, see Ian Gary, you know, pulling out, you know, a uh, decision win on this one. Yep. And then if it does happen, you're saying it won't, but if it does happen, Wonderboy versus Shavkat, how do you see that one playing out? Uh, if that fight does go out, um, <laughs> Shavkat, most definitely. Man. I really see Shavkat getting him out of there. Uh, if not the first round, the second round via, you know, uh, TKO or submission. And then last one, obviously, for the welterweight title, Leon versus Colby. How do you see that one going, Tom? Uh, right now, man, just how the elements have been turning, bro. You know, you see Sean O'Malley is now champion over Al Jermaine. You see Sean Strickland is now champion over uh, Israel Adesanya. Man, I feel like, bro, they trying to take over. Be here, be so, uh, you know. But I got Leon picked, though, for sure, man. I got Leon picked, but... With this world that we live in, man, and mixed martial arts, you just never know. Definitely when that, that belt is online, and fighters come a little different, you know, when they fighting for that championship belt. Uh, but, you know, in, in, in the real world, I got Leon. And just while we're on the subject, actually, I did want to get your thoughts on the beef that's been that's been going down between Leon and Ian Gary, obviously with the news of Leon reportedly reportedly uh, kicking Ian Gary out of the gym. Where do you stand on all of that? Because it is a bit of a strange situation. You can kind of see both sides on it I, I really wouldn't call it beef i mean it's just it's just the truth you know his his coach and leon didn't kick him out his coach did yeah and at the end of the day like you know uh they're gonna fight that kid right it's mm -hmm. like you know why get his kid any more little intel on what the gym does and how they train and stuff like that i believe they was just being nice and ian probably came in there like he wanted to join the team at yeah. first you know no telling uh but there ain't no beef there you know uh it's just common sense, you know, if you finna fight somebody in the, in the future and you knowing that they preparing to try to take something away from you, why give them a, a, the advantage of seeing what y'all do and how y'all get down, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. 
No, it makes total sense. Uh, let's talk about yourself. As I mentioned there, coming off one of the best wins of your career, uh, to, one of the best years in your career, excuse me, in 2023 with the, the Fiala win and obviously the Alex Morono win a little bit back in October. How happy with are you with the way this year's played out? Uh, I mean, we always good and satisfied with a win. <laughs> it's way better than the other one, <laughs> loss. Uh, but regardless, though, it's just like me wanting to stay active is is everything. And as long as my body is good, as long as, you know, I'm able and willing to get into that cage, then let me do so. And I feel like right now I've shown my abilities at 170, you know, so I really want to keep this uh, this momentum going. You know, I feel like whatever our reason, things can slow down for myself. So, you know, we just going to have to wait and see what the UFC is on. But, you know, yeah, I see that. Well, I don't know. Let me just go ahead and plug that in right now. I got a YouTube channel that I'm uh, starting to be consistent on, starting to get my own media going and making sure that, you know, people just are able to see me and see what's going on in my career and that I am trying to fight at all times, you know, because this is how we get paid. Yeah, no, 100%. You mentioned the welterweight move there as well. That was obviously, a, I remember that storyline coming out, early, I think, earlier last year or, or the start of this I think it, it kind of felt like a seamless fit for you to go to 170. I know maybe the weight cut might be a little bit harder the Thursday night before fight night, but how does the overall move to, to welterweight feel for you? Uh, it feel, Well, a lot of people don't know that I was welterweight from amateur mm-hmm. all the way until yeah. I turned pro. Uh, the majority of the time with me doing MMA. Uh, but it was just the right time. After I lost to uh, Master Dean, I was about to make that move where – my management was like, you know, hey, we can get a better deal staying at 185 and taking one more fight. And then, you know, if you still want to, you can move down. Me being foolish, trying to get that money. Right? I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, fuck it. I stayed at 185 and then I fought Chris Curtis, you know, and they end up, you know, uh, beating me, knocking me out, whatever. I was just like, all right, fuck it, bro. Let me go ahead and make this move down to 170. But the thing was, though, since now coming off of two back-to-back losses, like I already knew that, like, bro, I had to really put in some work. So I made sure that, you know, that 170 cut that I made was going to be easy, you know. So I made sure to pay attention to my diet. I made sure to condition, you know, um, not just three times, but four times, you know, uh, in a day. And 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 really put myself in a, in a position where, you know, I felt comfortable with making that weight, you know, because I didn't I didn't cut no corners. You know, I did everything what I needed to do in order to make that weight. Uh, so when I did what I did against um, Andre uh, Fialo, uh, I realized, you know, I was like, yeah, this is exactly where I need to be. I wasn't tired. I wasn't, you know, uh, sluggish, you know, the power was still there. Like, everything was still there for me at 170. So when I uh, knocked him out in the uh, second round, I realized, yeah, this, this is exactly where we need to be for my career. Is there a difference in competition going in there against the 170 to 185? Like, is there any differences that you have to make in terms of the opponents or is it just, is it one, is it one and the same? I don't think it's all one in the same. Yeah, it's all one in the same. Uh, even shit, even Chris Curtis could be a one seventy fuck uh, mm-hmm. if you want to move down. Um, it's it's really just applying yourself as a fighter. So at one eighty five, I was really taking you know shortcuts, right? Uh, I wasn't working as hard. I wasn't training as hard because me walking around at one ninety, it ain't hard to make one eighty five, mm-hmm. right? It's not even a, a weight cut. Uh, so the thing was though. With that being said, I really wasn't taking it as seriously as I should have been as a professional fighter. But now that 170, I have no choice. Definitely if I want to make the weight and I want to make it clean. Because I can make the weight, right, uh, fucking uh, two days, right? But you're not going to, you know, your body's not going to function the same, mm-hmm. right? You're not going to be able to go out there and implement uh, your game plan because your body is too tired. Perfect example, Alex Volkanovsky in Islam. A 10-day notice to, you know, cut, you know, uh, 30 pounds. It's hard to do. It's hard on the body. Um, So there ain't no really difference. It's just for myself, you know, I'm taking my career a little bit more seriously now that I'm at 170. Do the matchups at welterweight interest you or excite you more than the matchups at middleweight? Potential matchups? Nah, man, as long as the matchups get me up to that belt, you know, I'm not trying to fight. The, the whole division. That makes sense? Like, yeah. you know, with, with, with Hamza line talking about I'll fight everybody, you lying. No, you won't. You only fight people that's going to get you to that damn belt, you know? And that's my biggest thing. Give me whoever's going to get me to that belt the fastest, you know? 
I know that you'll want to be in action before April, but does the thought of fighting on UFC 300 interest you? You say what? Oh, I, said, yeah, I, I, know, that, I know that you probably, April, yeah, yeah, I know that you want to fight before April, but would the, would the thought of fighting at UFC 300 that will probably that will probably line up for around about it? Uh, late I mean, April, I don't know what you? I don't know what that'll do for me fighting on UFC 300. You know, mm. uh, obviously the only thing that that'll do for anybody is if they the main event like a Conor McGregor. Mm. Um, like uh, uh, who else is a big name? Uh, John Jones, but he out, right? Uh, so they they would have to put a big name on that, you know, UFC three hundred for anybody to really care about that card. Yeah, it is, you know, you know, stacking up to, you know, from one hundred, two hundred to three hundred, seeing where the UFC then came from and how far they didn't got. But at the end of the day, that does nothing for me or my career. You mentioned McGregor, and I saw your tweet yesterday where you said that you don't think McGregor's going to be coming back any soon. I think he used the word he'll get bodied if he does. Uh, is that is that true? You really don't it's, think he's going to make make a comeback? I mean, come on, man, come on. Like, let's keep it a buck. If you if he was already going to come back, he would have came back. Even with the excuse of Usada, right? Um, you can't be using any type of you know uh, substance or uh, PEDs in the first place, you know. So regardless of Usada being gone, they still gonna have a a little drug agency that can still check us and make sure that we are not cheating or make sure that we're not using anything extra in order to enhance our abilities. But regardless, though, you know, Money Mac, man, he making all the money in the world. Like he doesn't need to fight. But one thing he is trying to do is because his ego, he's trying to stay relevant. He's trying to do what he can do in order to, you know, keep people. Interested in him. I mean, my man just got done singing "Locked Up" by Akon for whatever our reason on Twitter, but it blew up, right? Because yeah. he is who he is, and you know, I just realized I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, you're just trying to stay relevant for the UFC, try to keep people you like thinking that you know you coming back, right? But I don't think that man coming back. No, and if he does come back, you know, what I mean, hey, dope. You know, that's good for all of us. That's good for the sport in general. But you know, I'm just keeping it a buck. Like my man ain't coming back no time soon. No, it is, it is a fair point, though, isn't it? That a lot of every time Connor does anything, as you say, he puts a voice note on Twitter, it blows yeah. up. He mentions a comeback, it blows up. So, do you, so your sentiment is that's just his his way of keeping relevant, if you like? He got to. The UFC right now, because they a lot of people don't realize, you know, uh, the UFC and Connor, they are great partners, right? Mm. And right now, the UFC is still trying to find that big star to replace him but that's it's going to damn near impossible right yeah. to replace a man like conor mcgregor and it's going to be a while before they get a real mega star you know people trying to say sean o'malley but i just don't think sean o'malley has that presence like uh conor did you know and you don't need somebody exactly like conor but you got to have somebody that's confident on that mic and that is willing to speak their mind freely, you know, without any type of filter or anything mm -hmm. and, you know, have some type of little swagger about them, you know, and, you know, right now I feel like the UFC, they, they don't have that right now. And I feel like we need another face for the UFC, no matter who it is. I don't care who it is, but we need another face besides Conor McGregor. Who do you think that could be? Like if you just mentioned O'Malley, that person a lot of people talk about, who do you think when you look around, it's the most uh, who who I see, but he can't be the face of the UFC because the UFC wouldn't allow it. Sean Strickland numbers is going crazy right now on everything, right? Uh, but he's more of the people, and I mean that's how you become the face of combat, if anything, is getting the people behind you. But I feel like Sean still though, the way he speaks, it's not gonna have, you know, uh big brands and big endorsements to try to back him. But you know, hey, if if they do, that's a beautiful thing for him. Uh, but I, I can guess. I guess uh, I can say who else could be if it's not Sean Strickland. Um, it's hard, bro, because it, it's not a lot of people like that. I'm guessing uh, a Hamza, right? Yeah. I'm guessing a Hamza if he comes back and he's able to do what he claimed he can do, uh, he can definitely start his way to you know to that superstar status. You know, so Hamza. Well, look, to be a star, you need finishes you need knockouts you need viral moments so i couldn't have you on for the first time we've chatted without asking you how does it feel to have the best knockouts in UFC history uh it feels good you know i mean it's always debatable on what's the you know best knockout it's not in my head so, we're, we're, <laughs> thank you i appreciate <laughs> it so you know but it's good to be up there you know yeah. with the with the greats you know it's up it's cool to be out there with you know dan hendo it's cool to be out there with uh francis and guy who um um, Essen Bar Barboza, like, you know, these guys are, are legends of the game. 
and to submit myself, you know, with having, you know, a top knockout like I did, I feel like, you know, it, it, it's just put its place in history. You understand? And Impus obviously gone on to do good things outside the UFC. I think Friday night he fights for the PFL $1 million tournament and welterweight final. How does he feel? Yeah, for, yeah, for your old uh, Who's obviously a yeah, rare nice I, guy. I, just, I just spoke to him. I just spoke to him uh, not that long ago. And uh, he's doing great things, not just within the cage uh, in his uh, career as an MMA fighter, but just outside of the cage. And really kind of gave me uh, a lot of confidence that, you know, man, there's so much other things that we can do outside of uh, fighting, you know, to get this money and stuff like that. So uh, I'm happy for Ampa Kasagana, bro. He definitely going to get that million dollar bag. He definitely going to become a champ. And, you know, I, I think he's been blessed, you know, just to be having those opportunities now that, you know, he can fight for that type of that type of money. Yeah. And shout out to him for one of the nicest guys in MMA. Um, talking Here about you. PFL very quickly, I wanted to get get your thoughts on the news that broke yesterday of PFL obviously signing your old uh, home in terms of Bellator. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In, in Bellator. So how does that feel for you that Bellator, Bellator will be uh, taking over? Everybody, everybody, everybody getting their money. That's all. That's all I see. So I don't. I don't really feel anything about it. Um, it, it doesn't change. You know what I'm doing here in the UFC. Uh, but you know PFL doing their thing. They 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 taking you know uh, a chapter out of the UFC's book. You know by you know acquiring another you know uh, div not division but promotion and adding on to their division and adding on to their roster. Uh, but they still got a long way to go before they can even call themselves uh, competing with the UFC. You know, I seen one of the CEOs, he went on MMA fighting, talking about Dana worried. Like, Dana ain't worried about shit, bro. <laughs> that man sleeping on a, you know what I'm saying, bed full of money. Like, he good. So uh, I feel like um, the PFL, they just got to keep doing what they're doing and not worrying about, you know, the UFC and, and if they are concerned with them or not, you know. Do you think it's a good thing for the sport to have those two promotions together, or do you think more promotions, more more uh, versus? I think more. I think the more the better. You know that there's because right now uh, our sport is still one of the biggest and fastest growing sports out there behind pickleball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, though, uh, like MMA has a lot of young talent that's out there trying to get into the sport. Whether you're talking about, you know, these are boxers now trans uh, transitioning over to MMA or wrestlers now, you know, giving up on the Olympics and going straight into, you know, MMA, right? Uh, you got a lot of young, young talent out there that's trying to, you know, make a name for themselves. But it's going to be hard if you only got one or two, you know, big promotions out there. And then the rest is just regional shows. Uh, so, you know, the more major promotions that we have, the the, the better for the mixed martial artists, you know. But yeah. better for the promotion, though, at the end of the day, because if you don't have that many comp uh, competitors, then you're making the bulk of the money. Yeah, hundred percent. And money's kind of been a topic of conversation that's come come throughout this talk that we've had today. Um, so I'm interested to know because you also mentioned the the goal of fighting for the belt and winning the world title. What means more to you in your career? Get money or legacy? Uh, yeah, fuck a legacy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I thought you were about to say the belt at first. Uh, but yeah, so with, with that being said, for me, if I want to make the most amount of money ever in my career, I got to get the belt. Yeah. Period. If I want, if I want to really make the type of money that I believe I should be making as a mixed martial artist in the way that I fight, I got to get that belt. There's no other choice behind it. So that's why I work so hard. So I guess that's a bonus then on top of that, because me hunting down the money is also hunting down my legacy and making my legacy. Yeah. 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 Well, well, last one from me because I, I, I was looking through your Instagram earlier before we jumped on and I saw a picture of you hitting the pads, a video of you hitting the pads and the comment that you put on the video was take the throne 2024. So I'd like to yeah. know, it's pretty pretty clear what your ambition is for next year, but how do you accomplish yeah. that next year? What, what, are the, what are the steps in place to, to get to the belt? Oh, uh, yeah. You, well, you got to collect bodies on the way to the throne, you know, so that's all. It just being active and fighting in the UFC is definitely going to be able to see why they should put me as the next guy in order to fight for that belt in 2024. But I got to be active. I got to be healthy and I got to knock these boys out. You know, Alex Morono was a tough ass boy, you know, uh, but he showed me, okay, sometimes you can't beat somebody to death. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to strangle them. 
<laughs> you know, you got to put them out. And a lot of people don't don't know it, don't realize that my my jujitsu is just as good as uh, my stand up because that's what I started from in the in, in the first place when I first got started with MMA was my jujitsu. So before I was in the boxing room, before I was in the kickboxing room, I was in, on a jujitsu match the whole time. And you know, I feel like you know that's one thing that I can use in uh, my ability is to get a uh, submission on somebody in the cage. But it, it's just fun beating up on folks. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. 100%, 100%. Joaquin, it was great to sit down and chat. It's great to see you doing so well in your career. Thank you for Thanks. your time. And I'd love to talk again soon. No, no, appreciate you, man. Thank you.